let's look at the introduction to human anatomy. Anatomy is derived from a Greek word, with anatome, which means to cut up. So when the human body structure is studied through the process of dissection, which literally means to cut up or to open up, is anatomy. And anatomy will help to provide answers to some questions such as what, how, when, and also why. For example, what are the structural configuration of the neurocranium? We know that neurocranium is made up of patches of bones that are joined as sutures. So anatomy, we have to answer the question of what are the structural configuration of the neurocranium. It will also help us to answer the question of how, how is urine produced by the kidney. Urine is produced by the kidney because of the microscopic components of the kidney which are basically the nephrons. So the nephrons are the microscopic unit that is responsible for the production of urine. And the anatomy of this structure will help us answer the question of how urine is produced. Also, it will help us to answer the question of when. We know that in anatomy, different structures at different regions are tagged different names. For example, we have the subclavian artery. Subclavian artery will become the axillary artery as soon as it passes through the axilla. And when it exits the axilla, it will become the brachial artery. Anatomy will provide answers to when structure changes its name and also the basis onto which this name will change. And also why, why we don't feel the weight of the brain. We don't feel the weight of the brain because of the cerebrospinal fluid that is contained within the neurocranium. And this is what the brain is suspended in. And this helps to neutralize the weight of the brain. And so we don't get to feel the weight of the brain. So anatomy will help us to answer some interesting questions about the configuration of the human body and some of the functions that they exhibit. Even though it is vast, it can be very, very interesting. Anatomy can be applied in different fields. Let's look at career development in medical sciences. Virtually all the courses in medical sciences need the knowledge of anatomy because it involves human bodies such as mortuary science, to become a medical doctor, you need adequate knowledge of anatomy, also radiographers, medical lab scientists, physiologists, and so on. For forensic and also for investigations, when the cause of death is needed to be ascertained on organs of the body, the adequate knowledge of anatomy is also needed in this regard. It is also applied in research and discovery of new modalities. For research to be carried out on human body, adequate knowledge of the human body structure is needed so that when there are changes, it can be easily deduced and evaluated because the structural configuration is already known. So when there are differences, it is going to be easily detected. Also in sports guide and injury, adequate knowledge of anatomy is also needed because it involves the manipulation of the human body to execute different activities. So the knowledge of anatomy is also needed in this regard. So we can add to this list as we may so desire. Subdivisions. There are different subdivisions in anatomy. We have microscopic anatomy, which involve histological evaluation of different organs in the body. This is studied with the head of a microscope. We also have macroscopic anatomy, which is the gross anatomy, and it can either be region-based or systemic-based, depending on how it wants to be studied. But this is the gross presentation of the different organs in the body. That is the way it is seen with the naked eye. Then we have cadaveric anatomy, which involves the use of cadaver to study anatomy. Then living anatomy, when living subjects are used to study anatomy. Embryology is developmental anatomy, just to establish the developmental process from fertilization to the final maturation of the baby. Then radiographic or image anatomy is the use of radiographic images to study anatomy. Then we have applied anatomy. When we use our knowledge of anatomy to evaluate disease conditions and also to provide solution. Then we have genetics, which involve the transformation of genetic characters from parents down to their offspring. So these are the different subdivisions of anatomy. And one may want to specialize in any of these depending on our interest. Then we have structural configuration of the body. The structural configuration of the body shows that the body has different structures that make up the entire human body. So the body is seen as a single unit, but we have different structures that forms this single unit that is called the human body. 
So in trying to build this single unit, we must have a framework, which is the skeletal system. The skeletal system is the bony arrangement or network of the body, and it creates the framework onto which other structures are added. So we have the skeletal system, which of course we've said gives the framework of the body. Within the skeletal system, we have ligaments that help to join bones together. So ligament is also part of the structural component of the skeletal system, helping to join one bone to the other. And this is followed with the muscles. So the muscles are seen overlining the bones, so they cover up the bones. And of course, we have associated tendons that helps in this connection. Then we have the organs and systems, different organs in the body that make up the system, such as the GI tract, the urinary system, the cardiovascular system, and so on. Then we have the vessels and nerves. The vessels basically provide oxygen and nutrients to the cells which make up the organs and also the system. So they need to be filled with oxygen and nutrients so that they will be able to carry out their metabolic activities. Within the vessels, we have the lymphatic system, which is also involved in the drainage of fluid within the tissues. Then we also have nerves, which are involved in the sensation of the body. We also have glands. The glands secrete chemical substances that help to control metabolic activities of the body. The different organs need to undergo different activities, and this is under the influence of hormones that are secreted by glands. Then we also have the subcutaneous tissue and skin, which forms the external configuration of the body. This tends to like cover up the entire structure on the outside. The first structure we have is the subcutaneous tissue, then this is overlined by the skin. So when we combine all these structures together, we have the single structure that is seen as the human body. Regions of the body, we have different regions of the human body. The first one is the head region, and this is the head region. Then this starts with the head region, we have the constriction that is called the neck, and this is the constriction that is called the neck. The next structure is the torso or the trunk. So when we chop up the two limbs, the upper limb and the lower limb, the structure that we have remaining is the trunk. The trunk is further subdivided into the thorax. So we have the thorax as the most superior part of the trunk. The more inferior, we have the abdomen. The thorax and the abdomen is separated by diaphragm that helps to compartmentalize this region. So we have the diaphragm separating the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity. The more inferior, we have the pelvic cavity. So this is the thorax as the superior part, and inferiorly, we have the abdomen. Then inferiorly to the abdominal cavity, we have the pelvic cavity. And this is the pelvic cavity within this region. So we have the extremities. The extremities can also be further subdivided into the upper extremities, which include the upper limb, then the lower extremities, which include the lower limb. The body is also made up of different systems. We have the integumentary system, which involves the skin and its associated structures. We have the skeletal system, which is the bony configuration of the body. We have the muscular system. We have the lymphatic system, which helps to maintain fluid balance in the body by mopping up or draining up lymph within the tissue. And also present immune function. We have the respiratory system, which involves the taking in of oxygen and also the breathing out of carbon four oxide. And we have the digestive system, which is involved in breaking down of food substances. Then we have the nervous system, which includes the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. And these are involved in the transmission of impulses, the interpretation of impulses, and also execution of actions. Then we have the endocrine system involved in the secretion of hormones that helps to control body metabolic activities. We have the cardiovascular system, which is made up of the heart and also the vessels. And this is responsible for the pumping and also the transportation of blood to or through different organs in the body. We have the urinary system, which involves the production of urine and also its elimination to the external environment. Then we have the reproductive system that is involved in the production of offsprings. So this is a tax for us, list the different organs in the systems that we have listed. So thanks for watching. Let's meet again.